walking down the red carpet to look the television nation in the eye. It is a well-worn ritual of presidents, but his message last night was far from ritual. We saw a mission of counterterrorism in Afghanistan, getting the terrorists and stopping attacks, morph into a counterinsurgency, nation building, trying to create a democratic, cohesive, and united Afghanistan, something that has never been done over many centuries of Afghan's history. Ironically, it's exactly what his predecessor, barricaded in the White House not so long ago, thought. But what a contrast to Biden's old boss, who used nation building to reluctantly justify an extra 100,000 troops for Afghanistan. Then Vice President Biden was the only cabinet member to vote against the deployment. We will ensure that Afghanistan is never a safe haven for terror. Then there was his predecessor, George W. Bush, who used nation building after 9-11 to justify going after Saddam Hussein. They're building a strong democracy that can handle these challenges, and that will be a model for the Middle East. Freedom in Iraq will inspire reformers from Damascus to Tehran. But freedom without the institutions and laws led to anarchy. Perhaps the most notorious example of nation building gone wrong was in the jungles of Vietnam, immortalized by the phrase of one American commander that we need to destroy this town in order to save it, and articulated by a president who used carpet bombing to spread democracy. And we shall fight the battle against aggression in Vietnam. Last of the evacuees fleeing Fast forward to America's ignominious retreat from Saigon. So why and how does Uncle Sam keep getting it wrong? The didactic monuments of Washington hold one answer. Their American exceptionalism in granite and marble, a democracy with imperial clout, power diluted by guilt. But when Lady Liberty is paraded at the head of a marching army, her appeal fades. History holds the other answer to America's nation-building urges. President Truman used a flattened Nazi Germany like a blank canvas on which to graft an American-style constitution with a federal system and an independent judiciary. The mission was backed up by huge amounts of money, courtesy of the Secretary of State, George C. Marshall. We find ourselves, our nation, in a world position of vast responsibility. We can act for our own good by acting for the world's good. There was method behind the money. A rebuilt and democratic Western Europe would form part of a solid iron curtain against communism. Europe is America's most successful experiment in nation building, but also to date its only one. Not to be tried again, anywhere, as long as he's in charge.